got a lot of feedback to last week's message. Uh, wow. And the whole idea is fear not. So we're going to do fear not part two today. Now, so let me break down the word fear. The word fear means dread, terror. It also means to be overwhelmed to the point of stopping. So I'm going to have my amazing audience of Marcus, our board member, Pastor Page, amazing teacher, world shaker, former fashion model. So you guys are going to repeat. You guys are my audience today, okay? All right, so here's what you're going to say. Say overwhelmed to the point of stopping. So that's an amazing thing that fear can so overwhelm somebody to the point that they stop. And that's what we got into last week. We're going to get into that today. Proverbs 29 verse 25 says, The fear of a person will bring a snare. And we broke down what the word snare means. It means a trap. It means a lock. And it means to halt. Okay, um, all of us that are on the stage, we're runners. Uh, I know Pastor Page played tennis, volleyball, basketball. Marcus, what was one of the sports you like to play? Okay, basketball. And, and so we all know that by, by moving your body, if you move in a certain way, you can, you can literally pull a muscle. Okay, you can, you can pull your groin. And you've seen it before. It'll just halt a player. Even if you're just watching a, a tennis match, you'll see someone that just all of a sudden something happens to them, male or female tennis player, and it just, it just halts them. And so that's exactly the word that's used here. The fear of a man or the fear of any person will bring a snare, a trap to lock something to halt it. That means that you had, you had movement and then you stopped. Okay. Now, you have to understand we just stepped into a new decade, <laughs> 2020. So for research, I was looking at some old videos of people who were talking a lot of stuff on New Year's Eve before 2020 hit. Okay. <laughs> it's a true story. So I started looking and everyone was like, "Woo, it's going to be great. And everyone was like this. Thank God that decade is over. Okay. All right. So what they were saying is I have been released from a decade of challenges. Okay. And then we stepped into 2020. And it was going pretty well for a while. January was going kind of business as usual, right? Okay, looking good. Got, got some, I'm optimistic. <laughs> February, there were some, some rumblings. There's some rumblings. And then a whole lot of information, knowledge, setbacks, debris. Thoughts, fears started to hit the screens that we watch. The TV screen, the computer screen, and the phone screen. It's powerful, huh? Panic, 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 halt, panic, stop. Don't buy that house. Don't. Don't be happy about your relationship. What? <laughs> don't, don't, don't feel good that you had a, had a great year last year. Don't, don't get optimistic. Panic. Halt. Wait. There's some new shifting here. All right, now. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, this is something you should study during the week, that there are times and seasons for everything. There's a time to tear 
and a time to mend. Let's just go there for a second. See, you have to understand that God is not thrown off that there are difficult times that go on. There's a time to tear and a time to mend. Now, wherever all this comes from, I don't think anybody has all the answers. But there's a time to tear and a time to mend. There's a, there's, there's, there's a time where, where there, will be, there will be difficulties that, that happen. So a lot of difficulties started hitting people and all of a sudden, the fear of a person brought a snare, a trap, a lock, a halt. And I know people that have been trapped, locked, halted since March. They've been locked in the houses. They've been locked in their mind. They've been locked in their vision. They've been locked in their joy. They've been locked in their peace. They've been locked from their family, they've been locked from their destiny, and I believe that that is unscriptural. Now, if I'm supposed to quarantine myself, you both know, I do. I wear a mask, I wash my hands, I do the things that I need to do to protect other people and myself because I value other people and I value myself. Fair enough? Okay. But, Marcus, I'm going to keep dreaming. I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep believing that Psalms 37, 4 still works in the midst of a pandemic. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart in 2020, not just after the pandemic finds a vaccine. The fear of a man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord, they shall be safe. Wow. So last week, we talked about that there are four main reasons people fear. And we gave you the first two last week. I will go through those first two to review, and then I will go into... The next two. Four reasons that people fear. Number one is they feel overwhelmed. We talked about that. You should listen to last week's message. Holy schmoly, guacamole. Number two, people fear because they are not equipped. And both of you last week got very touched by that scripture. Hosea 4, 6. It says, for my people are destroyed for their lack of of knowledge. So because of a lack of knowledge, God says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are unraveling. My people are unraveling. Watch. My people are unraveling. I don't know. Marcus, have you seen that? You see people in stores sometimes? They're unraveling. On the news, they're unraveling, right? On the streets, they're unraveling. In the churches, they're unraveling. In the synagogues, they're unraveling. In people's families, they're unraveling. Good teaching, right? For my people are unraveling for their lack, for their lack of knowledge. Now, so I looked up the word lack, and it, here's what it means. It means that you do not have an, a, a sufficient amount. <laughs> you lack and this reminds me of Marcus. When we were kids, uh, we would want to go from Whittier, California to Huntington Beach. Okay. But you needed something called gas. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so like somebody would have a Volkswagen or, or something like that, okay? And you would pitch in. Do you remember these days? You'd pitch in. <laughs> Marcus, how much you got? Got a dollar fifty. Okay. <laughs> Teresa, how much you got? A dollar eighty. <laughs> Paige, how much you got? Two dollar. Okay. We can get there. Okay. But so the whole idea was to have enough money to pay for the 
gasoline to get you 23 miles from Whittier to Huntington Beach and back. Because you got to get back. <laughs> so the whole idea is not to have lack, which is not a sufficient amount. Ooh, this is so good. For my people are destroyed because they do not have a sufficient enough. They do not have the right amount of knowledge to get from Whittier to Huntington Beach. They done stopped in Buena Park. <laughs> this is so powerful. It's like, it's like, you know, you, you watch Instagram and like someone just like reads one quote and they, that, that's what they got for the day. I read this quote. Okay, that's going to get you, that's going to get you from Whittier because <laughs> we're going down Beach Boulevard. Yeah, just it, it's gonna get you down about four miles, and they're like, "Oh my God, the song so moved me." Tim, listen to the song; it'll move you. And then I listen, and I'm not moved because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh, faith cometh, faith cometh, faith cometh. You can get a sufficient amount of gasoline in your spiritual tank by meditating on the word of God. It's the truth. You, you, could, you, could, you could get so fired up, you, you get so much gas, you get to Huntington Beach, and take a laugh, Marcus, and, and you end up at Seal Beach. <laughs> then you can pass Seal Beach. Are you with me? Got to know the coast now. Come on, PCH. Then you then you're gonna get to then you're gonna get to Newport Beach, and then you can keep on going and get to Corona Del Mar. Then you can keep on going and, and get and get to Laguna. Then you keep going and you can get to Dana Point. Keep going and get to San Clemente. See, I'm trying to tell you, my people are destroyed. They are unraveling because of their lack of knowledge. But how come in the midst of people unraveling, some people, I am watching their life just explode into a new dimension of glory. So powerful, right? So we're talking about fear not. Fear means dread, terror, overwhelmed to the point of stopping, to the point of stopping. I'm overwhelmed. I'm not equipped. We got to get equipped. We got to get equipped. Equipped on what God said. God said. What, what did God say? What did God say? After uh, last week's message, Marcus, one of our board members here, gave me an amazing scripture. And it's Psalms 34. And it starts with this. I will bless the Lord with all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. It says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, is what Marcus told me, and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. Is that just so powerful? Because after, after last week's message, he says, man, I'll tell you a scripture that has really helped me. Listen to this again. I sought the Lord. So what's going to happen when fear tries to attack you and stop you and halt you? It's so easy to get distracted. But David, the psalmist said, that's not what I did. He said, I sought the Lord. I sought to, to, to seek means you're coming after. I sought, I sought, I, 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 I sought the Lord. I, I, I pursued, I pursued, I pursued the Lord. I pursued, I pursued the Lord and he heard me. Wow, he heard me. 
So in the midst of your fear of whether you're going to lose your house, he hears you. In the midst of your fear of, are my kids going to be okay? He hears you. In the midst of the fear of what's going to happen in America, he hears you. In the fear of what's going to happen in the world, he hears you. In the fear of what's going to happen with racism and all the turmoil, he hears us. In the midst of the chaos, God hears us. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. I pursued the Lord, and he heard me. And he delivered me. So I've done a lot of research on this. The word delivered, a lot of times you'll see this in the Old Testament where it talks about the right hand of the Lord. That's like the strong arm of deliverance when he just comes in and just delivers. This is, this is the idea is that he came in with might. You know what's going to happen? In the midst of your plight, God's coming in with might. I'm sorry, but I'm a good rhymer. In the midst of your plight, God's coming in with might. He will deliver you with strength. He will deliver me. And he will deliver you from all, all, my big group here, say it together, say all. He's going to deliver you from all your fears. Ooh. Well, I have a fear of, he'll deliver from all your fears. Well, I did not fear this. He'll deliver you. I, I've been seeing somebody to try to help me. He will deliver you from all your fears. So four reasons that people fear. They get overwhelmed. They're not equipped. And the third reason people fear is that they feel like they might lose even more than they've lost already. Ooh, this is so good. That's where a lot of people are that I talk to. They're like, Tim, I had this happen in the 60s. I had this happen in the 70s. Come on, somebody. Had this happened in the 80s? This happened in the 90s? And they fear because they think, I can't take many more losses. I believe that God is a restorer. <laughs> I believe in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 16, that God will rescue the lame. He will renew your name. And he will give you fame wherever there was shame. And he will restore your fortunes before your very eyes. Instead of waiting around and saying, will I lose more? Have faith in God and get ready to take back what the enemy has stole from you. It is time for your comeback. Somebody clap on the platform. <laughs> Four reasons for fear. They feel overwhelmed. Number two, they feel like they're not equipped. They feel like they might lose more. Okay, I got to get that out of their mentalities, you guys. I got to get that out of their. I got to get that out of their mentality that they're gonna that they're gonna lose and they're gonna they're gonna lose and then and now now they're on a losing streak. No, God can stop your losing streak right about now. The Bible says this: Proverbs chapter thirteen, verse twenty. In the Message Bible, it says unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn your life around. I'm trying to tell you, some of you have been disappointed and disappointed and disappointed and disappointed and disappointed, but a sudden good break, a sudden good break. God is about to give you a sudden good break in October, a sudden good break in November, a sudden good break in December. God is giving you a sudden good break. God is giving this church a sudden good break. I believe there's somebody watching here today. I tell you, you're going to just give us a heap of money so we could do what we need to do. I've been in church meetings where people have come up and gave a million dollars at one time to a church and a church building, and they said, you know, I, I, I just, I just want to do something that lasts longer than my lifetime. 
why don't you help us? Give us a sudden good break so we can help more people. And you watch as you help somebody else get a break. Breaks come to you. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Four reasons people fear overwhelm. Number two, they're not equipped. Number three, they're afraid they may lose more. And if we're all, on, all honest, you've probably been there before. You, get, you, you go into a losing season. You've been there before. I've been there before. You feel like, oh, my God, I'm, 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 in, I'm in a losing season. But what's going to happen is that God is the author and the finisher of your faith. So not only does God, does God start something, <laughs> his mind is on finishing it. So he sees that you have fear and maybe you're paralyzed by fear and you're in a trap and you're locked and you're halted, but he's saying to you through the power of the Holy Spirit, just get up one more time. Just get up one more time. Because you're going to get a break. Uh, we have a brother named Randy who's in heaven, and he passed away. And a um, couple, couple months after he, he, he passed away, I had to go do a, a conference in South Africa. At that conference was Brian Houston. Uh, at that conference uh, was also... Um, just, just, just a lot of good speakers. Ray McCauley was the one that was leading the conference. It was, it was like a who's who of, of speakers. And I remember they had 13,000 people that night. And that night I was speaking and, and Randy had just died just literally like about a month and a half prior to the conference. And, and I, I, I did great in my speaking and I prayed for people and never said one thing about my brother had just passed. And so, but I, I tell you, Marcus, I felt like I was losing because I was thinking, man, I've gained so much in ministry, but I've lost so much on the personal side. We've had people die. I've been through pain. I've been through ripping. I've had people steal money from me. I, I just, I had a lot of personal losses that just, that's what I was thinking about at that time. I was down. And so God decided to use somebody that shocked me. Many times, God will bring somebody to remind you of who God really is, and he'll bring them in a package that we don't think, you know, is going to have the word from God. <laughs> this guy... And because I'm a bit of an actor, I got to use my Bible here for a minute. This guy had one of the biggest Bibles I've ever seen in my life. And he was a long-haired, blonde guy in South Africa. He was a surfer. He was a, he was a surfer in South Africa because they have, they have good waves in, in Durban and other places in South Africa. And he was a surfer. And so... I just got done being Tim Story, 13,000 people just wowing the crowd, but I was hurting inside, and, and I, I had a lot of pain, and, and I was stuck, trapped, locked, halted with fear of what am I going to lose next? It's good, right? So what happened is that the enemy had me stop right there. Like, don't try some fancy Tim Story trying to help the world because I had the Hollywood Bible study, traveling all, the, all over the world, speaking all over the world, but then pain in my life, broken relationship, uh, all this pain in my life. And so God's about to use a guy with a big old Bible, but the thing that was interesting, Marcus, because I think you remember these days, it was a leather-bound Bible that had a, like a big fish on it, like from the 70s. <laughs> It was like this. It was like this. He was a dude. He was a dude before there were dudes, this guy. <laughs> I promise you, he did his head like this. This is a true story. Now, I mean, I won't even name all the preachers, but there was like five 
mega preachers there. Why didn't God use him? Those guys. He uses the dude. So the guy goes like this. He goes, I'm up on the platform praying for people after the service because I was known for that, right? I'd stay forever. I'd pray for people. And all the other preachers were in the back drinking cranberry juice. So I was <laughs> praying for everybody. So the service is over. I just praying for people forever. And he's going like this to me. Like, dude, come here. So something in me goes, give the guy a shot. So I come up to him and he goes, I got a word from the Lord for you. I'm thinking, oh, please. Look at your Bible, buddy. <laughs> that Bible, it's from Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, 1968. <laughs> the Jesus Movement with Chuck Smith. <laughs> and Calvary Chapel people, you know I love you. And Jim Kempner, my buddy, <laughs> doing those concerts that he used to do. That's, it looked like back in that day. He goes, I got a word f f from God for you. So this is going to blow you guys away. And I don't even know if Pastor Stefan's ever heard this story like this. Now, Marcus, nobody at the conference except the senior pastor, Pastor Ray McCauley, knew that my brother had died because I told don't say anything to anybody because I didn't want anybody feeling sorry for me. And it wasn't the days of social media like today where you put things up. So nobody knew but him. And he didn't overly coddle me. He just made sure I was okay. So this guy says... Like this, he goes, he goes, no matter what happened to your brother, and I go, whoa. He goes, no matter what happened to your brother, the loss of your brother, I go, wait, 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 wait. How do you know that? He said, when I was sitting in my chair, I was about to go home, and God downloaded a word for you. And said he just lost his brother. And the enemy is telling him to just cave in right now. Go tell him that I am with him, meaning God. So here's what he says. He goes, no matter what happened to your brother. Watch, he's got his big Bible like this. Never forget it. He's rocking his head. He says, the Lord is with you, Tim Story. He kept saying my name. I'll never forget this. One of the most powerful things I've ever heard. He says, stand up in the strength of God. That's what he said. And he said, and hit the wall one more time. And then he said, in the name of God, it's coming down. I lived off that for five years. He said, stand strong in the Lord and hit the wall one more time. <laughs> because when you're paralyzed by fear, when you got COVID-19, then you got racism, then you got elections, difficulties, you got earthquakes, you got tsunamis, you got hurricanes, you got confusion, you have derelicts trying to be leaders. People, listen to me. You start to almost get depleted of energy. This guy said, be strong in the Lord and hit the wall one more time. But then he said, in the name of God, it's coming down. That's exactly what happened. Marcus, that's exactly what doggone happened. I hugged that surfer forever. I was like, dude, 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 where's my car? <laughs> Almost done. Four reasons people have fear. If we get overwhelmed, we're not equipped, we're afraid we're going to lose even more. I was there. But this guy said, be strong in the Lord. The fourth one is, we fear the unknown, the unknown. These are the questions everyone's asking me. What's going to happen? 
What's next? 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 Where are we? We fear the unknown. The unknown. We fear the path we've not traveled. They feared Vietnam when they'd never been to Vietnam. They feared the Korean War during the Korean War. They feared World War I, World War II. They'd never been involved in that. We feared the Gulf War, things people have not gone through. We fear many times the unknown. We fear the unknown territory. We fear the unknown places. But what if we didn't have to fear because... We have a God that has already gone before us. Wow. What if I could say, God, to be honest with you, I feel a little overwhelmed. But I'm going to do what you said in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. I'm going to trust in you with all my heart. Because I've never been here before. I never had to put on a mask. I never had to wash my hands so much. I never had to have this part of my career shut down and that part of my career shut down and this part of my career shut down. But God, in the midst of everything, because you're my father, I'm going to talk to you directly and I'm going to talk very, very, very real. Lord, I'm going to live in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I'm going to trust in you with all my heart. And I'm not going to lean on my own understanding because my own understanding is causing me to fear. But in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge you. And that's what's happened to me since COVID-19 hit, Marcus. I've never worshipped God like I do since I was 20 years of age because I never had this much time. I've never studied as much. I spoke at a conference the other day, another big secular one, and, and they said it again. They said, what did you just do to that building? The whole place was just filled with hope. Because you fill yourself with hope, and hope will come out of you. See? Trust in the Lord, I close. With all your heart, Tim Story. In all your ways, acknowledge me. And what? And what? Then what? God and I, God, shall direct your path. The fear of a man bringeth a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. The congregation church shall be safe. The congregation church is growing. We're going to have 15,000 people as online members watch it happen. We're going to have people that will come for live services from all over the world. We will have people that will move from different countries just to be in this atmosphere. The atmosphere not of a powerful woman or a powerful man of, oh, that is the best woman speaker I've ever heard or the greatest man speaker. Please, should we not get over this silliness by now? but an atmosphere of praise, an atmosphere of God, an atmosphere is that he is Lord. If you've never become a Christian and asked your Christ into your life, today is the day it's going to happen. Some of you are watching and you say, Tim's story, Whew, I used to walk strong with God, but I feel like I walked away. But today I want to come back. Not just to get away from fear, but I want to connect to Christ in a new way. The Bible says that Jesus became sin for you who knew no sin, that you might become righteous. And you're going to lift up holy hands, not hands where you just keep remembering your past. If you're a person who walked away from Christ and you're coming back or you've never become a Christian, I'm going to pray for you right now. Just say these words. Say, dear Jesus, come into my life in a new and special way. Say, Jesus, be Jesus in my life. 
And let me pray as an experienced pastor over your life. God, I pray that you would break fear off people. For you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Break fear off people. Fear of what can happen in their finances, in their jobs, in their families. Break fear. But Lord, let us see the light and that you are there for us, that you are guiding us and protecting us. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Hello, it's Tim Story. I hope you enjoyed the service. If so, subscribe. If not, still subscribe. It's good. <laughs>